In today's video from Midwest Rep Rap Fest 2022, we're taking a look at a Voron that prints chocolate, another Voron with two heads, and we're visiting KB3D and taking a look at a water-cooled tool changer printer. But before we get started, I do want to give a huge shout out to Fabrico for partially sponsoring this year's Midwest Rep Rap coverage. If you're looking for some printer parts, accessories, or kits, be sure to check them out. There's a lot to cover today, so let's get started. Oh! Chocolate! Chocolate. 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 Okay. Spongebob chocolate over here now? <laughs> oh my goodness. So, okay, we are here with Coco Press with... Uh, Ellie. Ellie. Okay, so, printing chocolate. Yes. Explain. Elaborate. Okay, so, the reason to print chocolate first is twofold. You can either make custom stuff, which is really cool, one-off chocolate bars that you can't get at a chocolate shop, or you can make intricate designs that are not possible to make with traditional chocolate making. Uh, example, my favorite example of that is like a gyroid infill chocolate. You can't make that any other way, not with 3D printing. Which you have some here. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, because you're, you're not going to be able to, you're, you can't mold that. You can't mold that. You have overlapping shapes, you have overlapping stuff, and it actually creates kind of a cool texture when you eat it. So there, there's like a reason to do it. It's not, it doesn't just look cool, it also tastes cool. Okay, yeah. so so you have your cocoa press here, yep. which we, we've seen this. This has been yep. available for a while now. It's yep. it's it's out there, but this um, this is a little familiar to me. But there's something I can't quite put my finger on it. Something's different. And so is it the giant extruder on it? Maybe, maybe. So so what is this? Is something new? Obviously. Yeah. So this is a mini version of the printer. It's an early prototype. We're testing it out, but it's a chocolate printer based on the Voron V0.1. So so. If I wanted to do this, okay, how, how much is different? What, what, what is different from a normal printer to one that does chocolate? So, it, from a, a normal plastic printer, you're saying? Yeah. So, so if I wanted to convert my printer yeah. to do this, so, so what's different? First, you need to extend the Z because we have this big cartridge that goes in there and you need a way to actually get it into the, okay. the printer. So we extend the Z a couple inches and then you need something to actually heat the chocolate and extrude it. Um, we have a dual heating system in here that uh, heats it to about a tenth of a degree Celsius accuracy. And we're heating it to just below body temperature and pushing on it with about 40 or 50 pounds of force. And then it's solidifying uh, right when it's extruded. Cool. Yeah. So is this something you're going to be trying to bring to market? Like, is it going to be like That's a completed unit or kits that people can do to their own printers or design their own motion system for their use case? Or We haven't quite figured it out. I would love it if we could at first bring a uh, V0.1 uh, kit to market um, that has a chocolate extruder attached to it, pr uh, potentially provide a way for people who already have forons to upgrade their printers. Although need to make sure to clean it out pretty well uh, <laughs> in between printing ABS and printing chocolate. Yeah, those don't uh, go I like together. having the dedicated machine that has never printed plastic before. <laughs> uh, and then eventually also potentially selling a, a fully assembled one uh, okay. as well. But we're not quite sure. It'll probably be six months to a year before we have anything out on that. Uh, just want to show it off because we got it working about three weeks ago and Murph is the place to do that, yeah. you know? So, so the question is, yeah. when are we going to have dual extrusion so we can do caramel fill? When are you going to have a dual extrusion uh, boron printer? We got one. We got one over there. You do? Yeah. Well, I'm out of the loop. That's embarrassing. Oh, there you go. So we're going to get caramel filled soon. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> cool. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks. Yes. So, Eddie. How's Eddie, it the going? engineer. Yeah. What, what, what have you created? What, yeah, what, what exactly. is this? There's, I'm seeing double. I'm yes, seeing you double. are seeing double. Yeah, so this is a Trident, but it's a Trident IDEX printer. So, um, if you think about prototyping for you know any industrial setting, generally you're going to want soluble uh, filament, or, so you can print like a benchy upside down, which this was printed like this. Um, but if you notice on those surfaces uh, that are actually upside down, all those surfaces are really smooth because I was using dent supports. So this is really the holy grail for being able to print you know higher quality parts, um, especially if you're doing an injection molded part. Uh, and so I always knew I wanted to build an IDEX printer. And since Steve did such a great job on Trident getting it all kind of refined, I took his design and ended up creating a two-head version, um, changing our NEMA 17 motors in the back to two NEMA 14 motors, oh. um, and adding some additional belts 
on either side to handle the y-axis movement. So I've tried to keep as many parts the same as possible, which is really cool, uh, because then, you know, as the Trident gets updated, a lot of these parts can transfer over. I don't have to redo a bunch of work. There's still some refinement and things like that, uh, but we do have the files on GitHub on the Frankenborn GitHub. Um, so if you want to try it out, I think there's maybe five or ten people that have actually built one of these. So if you're, you're adventurous, you can, you can try yes, building one of these. Yes, it so, is. Uh, here be dragons, for sure. Okay, so right now for space. So you're not losing any Y. Correct. But yep. how, how much are we losing on the X here? If you were to convert yeah. an existing machine. For sure, yeah. So in this case, um, I have a frame that is 100 millimeters wider than it should be. So this is a 250 by 250 bed and a 350 wide X kind of frame size. However, I can't quite reach the full width. If you see this, I'm still losing maybe 10 or 20 millimeters per side. Okay. Um, so it's about twice the tool head width. So in this case, I'm lo losing about 125 millimeters total. Okay. So, um, it all depends if you want to do like uh, duplication mode or mirrored, you're going to design a different frame to you know go for that. But in this case, I only really care about doing two materials. So. And most of my printing will be with ABS and hips as the soluble support. So. Cool. And CAN bus, right? Yes. In this case, I'm using two uh, hood CAN boards, uh, both wired to the same CAN device. And that really cleans up the wiring. It's still a little bit of a prototype, but then you only have four wires all the way from your Raspberry Pi up here. Uh, otherwise, you couldn't really do it with two cable chains because the X chains would be running into each other. So. And then you also got the... Uh Yes. The fancy door. Yep. So I don't have the, you know, plexiglass here, but um, I really like these Misumi extrusions. You can get them off the shelf from Misumi cut to length. Uh, I really like this handle. It's really solid with Misumi hinges and then a little magnet to close it. So it just gives it that little bit of a professional vibe uh, with these flat front extrusions and then flush skirts that are a little bit deeper. Nice. Um, the goal with this is to allow you to put up to 20 millimeters of insulation around the perimeter of the printer uh, so you can get maybe closer to 70 to 80 C uh, chamber temperatures, which is really great for ABS. So, nice. Yep. Cool. Thank you. Awesome. Cool. So for those that can't be here today, if they were here, what would you say? I would say you're missing out. <laughs> <laughs> I recommend Murph at least once to everyone. It's pretty magical. It's unique for sure. Um, yeah. So what, what do you guys got here? Uh, well, we're doing some social specials. I'm Chris from KB3D. Um, you, most of you may know us because we're pretty, pretty integrated in the Voron community. Um, yeah, we're doing some show specials. We brought some P01 kits from LDO. Um, we brought Black Box over here. I haven't actually seen one of these before. So this is a... This is uh, a five-tool... Tool changer. Tool changer, yep. With a lot of cool, unique features that are kind of novel to it makes it um, just different, different than what you see when you think of tool changer. So is this your machine or are you just... This care? is my personal oh, machine. Oh, that's your yeah. personal one. Yeah. Okay. Yep. We do sell kits for it. Okay. Uh, we support it fully. Just let me do more on. Can I open the door? Yeah, absolutely. There you go. So it's got a counterweighted Z-axis in there. Just so we can do some fast Z-hops. Because we're tool changing and we're always Z-hopping past our previous extrusions. Um... It's uh, water cold, which is neat. Oh, nice. Um, yeah. Actually, I can probably have it change a tool here for you. Yeah, it's a water cold tool changer. It's done so passively. Um, so we're actually just uh, smashing the, the cold side of the um, hot end okay. up against this aluminum X plate and, and conductively sinking the heat out of it. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. So that so that is basically heat sink, water cooled, and the heat just transfers through. Exactly. Yep. And now that it's done homing, if you also look on the back side of the tools, there's an aluminum bar in the dock there that serves the same purpose. So we're also actively cooling them when they're docked. So is there water running through? Or is it just a heat sink? There's a, it's water cooled at the very end there. You can kind of see the another Northbridge PC style water cooler. Okay. Cool. Um, so yeah, it's always pulling heat out of the tools, whether they're uh, active or not. So we can keep them at full printing temperature and just go pick up a tool when we want to print with it and not wait for heat up or anything like that. Nice. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, it's really, really nice machine. It's almost like furniture to me too. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um, 
um, yeah, I encourage you to go check out uh, the San JV01 that we're re-auctioning. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah. Cool. Thank you.